Welcome to the Aramco Powered by House studio and we've got a very, very special guest. Rose Zhang, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Now you're here playing ATS Hong Kong. What are your first impressions of the event? Oh, I love it. It's been amazing so far. Food's been amazing and the company has been great too. Uh, I felt like yeah, everyone's super welcoming from spectators to everyone working the events and it's my first time playing Aramco. Uh, it's also my first time in Hong Kong. so. Uh, everything's kind of a new experience, but I've been enjoying it. You're ticking a lot of boxes there. Yeah. Now yeah. you're fresh off playing Solheim and you're playing another team event. Yeah. You know, talk about Solheim. Yep. How was that experience? Solheim was incredible. Uh, even though we were on foreign soil, uh, the US team just collectively felt like a little bit like home. We were all just having a good time together in the team room. And um, at the same time, there were a lot of, of our families and friends who came over and came to watch and cheer for us. So uh, it's my first time kind of seeing crowds that would be yelling at you while you're walking up greens, but um, I really had an amazing time and I got a lot closer to a lot of the professionals out there that I've watched on TV since I was young. And it must be a whirlwind. We spoke before camera and you said, I don't know, the win, second event on the LPGA and you went and won out there. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. When I came out right off the bat, it was my first one. And um, that week was hectic on its own. I had four hours of press and media every, almost every day. Um, but, you know, I kind of took it in my own stride and everything was a blackout almost. And being able to win that really kind of allowed me to go on tour and, you know, have my status, um, which I couldn't be happier about. Um, I'm really learning everything inside the ropes right now, but everything's still been a learning experience. Uh, it's been as hectic as ever. And we're gonna add another one, Rookie of the Year. <laughs> uh, I'm saying this and you're like, is this me? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's been quite crazy. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I was full on preparing for Q School and it was kind of an experience that I knew that I needed to grind through, um, not expecting that I could have my own status, but the fact that I was able to play all these events, all these major championships, and um, even play the Solheim and now play a Ramco, I mean, um, it's only a blessing. It's almost a bit Rory McIlroy, <laughs> straight onto the tour, no Q school. Now, how much did college, how much did that help your game and uh, leading on to the LPGA? It's helped immensely. It helped me grow as a person and as a player. Uh, I felt like the stepping stone of being at Stanford and getting to know incredible people um, who are just so smart and um, so talented in their own rights and in their own fields. Um, just having that experience and getting to know them inspired me to be my own self and my own player, work at my craft, but also learn to be a person of community. and. Um, I don't know, that's really kind of what helped me once I transferred out um, onto tour golf. It really allowed me to understand that, hey, no matter what, I'm my own self and I do need to grind, but, you know, I have other things to back me up. You're Rose. <laughs> now, your superpower, okay, in your golf game, what would you say your superpower which helps you play well? My superpower, I would say I do well with the width in my swing. I have a good width that I've always emphasized on and I always try to work on. Um, and on top of that, I think just the overall flow of the golf swing. I'm not really a hard hitter. I'm not a strong hitter, but um, I definitely get the ball to go where I need it to be um, without the lack of distance. Love this. And you've worked with your coach since you were 11 years old, George. Yes. Which is very special. <laughs> and I think yeah. quite a crucial thing for consistency in your game. So we want you to hit one. Of you've course, already put down course. a stick. Yep, I, I have a lineman stick ready, um, aiming supposedly at the yellow flag. Perfect. <laughs> and that's you know what's interesting, everyone at home? Rose was like, this is perfect. I can actually work out my swing for tomorrow. So you were buzzing for the swing catalyst. Oh yeah, 100%. <laughs> Okay, so what are you working on? You mentioned width and flow. Is that something that you right. consciously work on? So this is something that I always consciously work on. I feel like sometimes when I um, play too much on the golf course, the swing tends to deviate from what you do in normal practice. So for me, you know, I tend to 
over swing a little bit and and over swing for me is not necessarily um having the club be over parallel but it's it's more so just the over extension and usually in irons you don't want it to be completely flat um that's my definition of over swing but i know that some other people other players they may have something different all right let's see one all right Really nice. And is that the shot shape you tend to play? Um, that one was a little bit different from what I usually like to play, but I do like to, you know, have a natural curve, a natural draw. Um, you know, when I, when I tend to deviate away from a normal kind of shot shape, it would, it would be like a little baby fade, uh, which isn't terrible. I work with it, but um, overall draw is ideal for me. Perfect. Let's see one more and then we'll get you on the swing catalyst. Of course. Oh, I got my draw. Slight like draw. that. Yeah. I can see exactly what you mean by width. You have really, really good width. So we've got it on the screen. Here we go. Okay. So anything in setup that you work with George? Right, so overall alignment, um, we always work on trying to be square. That's one of the most important things for me um, because I know that everything in general is pretty neutral. Um, it's very kind of textbook style. So if I was aiming left or right, it would definitely change my shot shape and my golf ball. I, see, I love this. You're the first person that's come into the shoot and you put the stick straight down. Yep. <laughs> there was no negotiating. It was like, right, stick down. Okay, so let's move through the swing. So talk to us a little about what you're feeling at the moment. Any swing thoughts? Right. Um, so the swing thoughts, you know, arms are hanging down a little bit. I'm not thinking about, you know, being really tight. And when I come up, I don't want to be using my wrists. I feel like using wrists is one of the most inconsistent things when it comes to the golf swing. We want to try to be as, um, you know, some people like a little bit of wrist angle, but others, you know, I they tend to, I guess, uh, get flippy. And I like to feel going straight back with the arms and then having that width afterwards. So this is very body led. Does that help you not get too many, too many wrists? Yes, exactly. I try to think like going to the nine o'clock, it's, it's really just about the arms and rotating a little bit. Um, my weight is on the right a little bit, on yep. the right side, um, but you know, it's very normal to load uh, and ensure that you can move over to the left when you come down. I mean, it doesn't get much better than <laughs> P2 there. That is unbelievable. We like that. Okay, let's start moving through the swing. Yeah. Up to the top. We can see from the face on angle that width you talk about, that lead arm. So straight there. Is that something <laughs> that you actively work on with George or is that just... It's something that I actively work on, but I've already always had that kind of natural motion. So it's not necessarily something that we think about all the time. It's just a byproduct of what I do every day. Here we go. Through to impact. Now this is the money maker, Rose, this position here. <laughs> Anything you're seeing that you're liking? Anything that I'm seeing that you're liking in this? Um, I like the overall sh weight shift of my club um, at a dress. You know, a lot of people do think that, um, you know, it's good to not be as quick with your hips, but that's always been something that's kind of what I've done um, and the timing of it has worked. I do work on it a little bit, making sure that I'm not stuck. Um, but as of now, everything's pretty lined up. I mean, in terms of impact, it doesn't get better than that. Yeah. And this as well, you're covering the ball, sternum's on top of the ball, low point. That, right, that everything's straight. Love. And that's something that we work on too, is not making, not having your club be straight out, but also not going in. And how do you work on that specifically through impact? Um, so I always like to hit three quarter shots, uh, even half shots. And little punch shots really kind of help your timing of things, especially getting yourself lined up. A lot of people like to add or de-loft, um, and that can be inconsistent with your yardages when you're out on the course. 
So tip, and I think you might have just given one there. Yes. The abbreviated shots. Can you show one? Would that be your tip for people at yes. home or have you got another one? 100%. This is actually something, if I had 200 golf balls, at least 50 of my golf balls would be three quarter shots. So I would always kind of set up and it would be the normal setup, but then I always come back a little bit, kind of check my, check my path a little bit. And then when I go through, it's kind of just simple, you know. Body led motion. Yeah, making sure that I stay there. Um, and that went a little left, so. the sign, by the way? I heard, I heard it, I heard it. <laughs> Yeah, that went a little left, um, so it's kind of like on the next shot. You know, it's fine to make mistakes when you're, you know, practicing, but I always kind of adjust a little bit. I just know that, oh, my face was closed, so I just need to go towards the target a little more. Um, and that's kind of always the thing that I work on. So you have that awareness of how impact should be for the shot shape that you want to see. That's exactly. another great tip. Exactly. You, know, you make those adjustments yourself. Yes, um, I think one thing is with George and I, you know, we don't have to always talk about what I'm doing and how to fix it, but it's almost like minor adjustments. And um, that's something that is really hard to do, I would say. Um, and the player just needs to be a lot more aware of his or her body uh, when it comes to making those little adjustments. And your advice to someone at home who's got a coach, is it having those conversations and collaborating with your coach? I think one, you know, obviously all coaches, they love questions. Um, so asking a lot of questions is good. But at the same time, if, if you ask too many questions that are almost redundant, you know, I would suggest someone taking a step back and thinking, how can I answer my own question? And once I'm stumped, I ask a coach but figure, try to figure something out beforehand, get a thought in mind, and then go to your coach and say, hey, I think this is the problem, what do you think? And if the coach, you know, that's where the conversation and discussions come from that make it more effective. We've got two unbelievable bits of gold here. So we've got abbreviated shots yes. and number two, you're the only one out there. So the fact yes. that you can ask yourself the question when you're playing, that's so important for performance. That's another great tip. Right. Rose, you're just ticking them all off here. Thank you right. so, so much no, for coming you. into the studio. Um, good luck for the rest of the week. And thank we all think you're amazing here at Ramco. Appreciate it. And we hope you'll be back for the rest of the team series next year. Thank you. Thank I you. hope I can. <laughs> thank you.